A reader lives a thousand lives before he dies. A man who doesn't read only lives one. What's happening, people? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Zabir and I'm a doctor and a startup founder based in the UK. In this video, I'm going to suggest the top five books I've read recently that have impacted my life significantly. They're mainly personal development books. Okay, so why do I like reading? It's simple. For me, Reading is to the mind what exercise is to the body. I'm going to mention each book one by one, and then I'll give a major takeaway from each one so you can get a bit of a preview of um, what you're getting yourselves into. The very first book we've got is Money by self-made millionaire Rob Moore. Before we get into it, think about your financial situation for a moment. Are you super happy with where it's at right now? The idea of a substantial savings account or a rainy day fund may seem like a far off dream. But if personal finances get you down, there's hope. This book is for everyone who spends their life working hard for money instead of having money work hard for them. The book explores how having ingrained and negative attitudes towards money can hold you back and it sets out formulas to help you take control of your finances. One key takeaway from the book is calculating your income generating value or IGV for short. This is how much an hour of your time is worth. So to calculate your IGV, add up the number of hours you work um, every week. And that's not just time spent on your job. Let's say it adds up to 50 hours a week, including any side hustles, property or interest from savings accounts. Any time you spend devoted to money counts. Let's call it a thousand a week. So your IGV is calculated by dividing a thousand by 50, which works out to 20 pounds an hour. Okay, so what's the point? So if there's an opportunity that allows you to generate more than 20 pounds an hour, then you should probably go for it. Well, why? When you accept chances like these, you're technically increasing your IGV. If on the other hand, something comes up and is less than your IGV, in this case, you could ask yourself if you can pay someone else to do it for less than 20 pounds an hour. So essentially you need to find out how much an hour of your time is worth, then do more of what makes that number go up. Second book on this list is The One Thing by Gary Keller and Jay Papasan. It's all about harnessing the power of focus. A really simple way to approach productivity is by focusing on the most important task that needs to be done. On the flip side, most people think that they're able to multitask and by definition, maintain focus on more than one thing simultaneously. Multitasking actually divides your attention and this can have a number of negative knock-on effects. In modern society, we're constantly being pulled and pushed in different directions by competing sources of information all vying to get our attention. In my work, for example, I could be documenting by hand in a patient's notes before having to check some bloods on the computer for another patient. And then I might get asked by a nurse to see an unwell patient. And at the same time, my bleep is going off because someone on the other side of the hospital needs some pain relief. You're constantly being distracted and this can really impact your performance. Doing one thing at a time is not a bad thing you'll actually probably get more done. Our brains are designed to focus on one thing before switching to another. Remember, focus is the absence of distractions. Ignore the noise. The next book on this list is The Almanac of Naval by Eric Jorgensen. This book is 200 pages of pure wisdom that stems from a tweet storm Naval made a few years ago titled How to Get Rich Without Getting Lucky. He's a successful investor, entrepreneur, and icon in Silicon Valley startup culture. There's amazing insights about building wealth, um, decision-making, and how you should be aspiring to, um, towards a meaningful and happy life. There are so many takeaways from this book. Um, I might have to make a separate video on it. But the thing that resonated with me the most is when he said, no one can compete with you on being you. It highlighted the importance of being your authentic self, embracing it as no one can compete with you on it. I thought about this before I posted my first video. You know, who should I be like on YouTube? What should my videos look like? What should I say? What should I sound like? When the answer was in plain sight, you have to be you. The fourth book on this list is The Unfair Advantage by Ash Ali and Hassan Kuba. Life isn't fair. You can let the unfairness of life put you off from trying something new, or you can focus on developing your own unfair advantages to stack the odds in your favor, which is what this book is all about. One big takeaway from this book um, is the five significant or unfair advantages the authors have identified that can help you stand out from the marketplace. Together, they form the acronym MILES. Money, intelligence and insight, location and luck, education and expertise, and status. 
having some of these unfair advantages can help give you speed and help catapult you into the stratosphere. At the start of the book, they give the example of Evan Spiegel, who you probably know was the co-founder of Snapchat, whose um, net worth hit a billion dollars, age 24. He himself said that he got really, really lucky and that life isn't fair. So who was he? He grew up in a wealthy and privileged household in LA. He was private school educated. He had private tutors. He had um, family connections to venture capitalists and he had access to money and important mentors um, right from the beginning. He then went to Stanford where he met one of his co-founders who could code and they were at the right age to see the visual communication expansion. Mobile tech enabled you to take relatively good front facing pictures and video at the time. It might be easy to think, oh, well, it was probably just because he had access to loads of money and sheer luck. In my opinion, I think they executed amazingly well on a very timely product. A couple hundred pages, useful, especially for those looking to start out a new venture like a business. So we've talked about multitasking. We've talked about money. Let's talk about discipline. Self-discipline is not about depriving yourself of things. It grants you freedom. This is a brilliant book with some really hard hitting principles about becoming more disciplined. The book is full of anecdotes and stoic concepts and ancient stories. So how did this book impact me? Well, before the turn of the year, I said to myself that I would try to focus on developing good daily habits like meditating, eating right, reading more, exercising every day, but it's easier said than done, right? In the age of alibis, we give ourselves the easy way out and say, oh, I'll just go to the gym tomorrow or I'll pick up that book next week when I'm not so busy with work. Ryan talks about Lou Gehrig. I probably butchered the name. Uh, he was a baseball icon who played over 2000 consecutive games for the New York Yankees. He played through injury, he played through pain, through broken bones, through illness. His nickname was the Iron Horse for good reason. Do you think it was based on one moment of sheer inspiration? No. Consistency was his superpower to success. There were probably players with more talent and more skill, but nobody outworked him. Nobody cared more about recovery and nobody sacrificed more. He showed up every single day for 17 years straight. Think about this for a second. What could you accomplish if, if you were a bit more disciplined? What greatness are you leaving on the table? In a world full of temptation, distractions, and choosing between vice and virtue is a dilemma we face on a daily basis. We were meant for more than merely existing. So have you read any of these? Let me know your thoughts and I'll get back to you below. Uh, links in the description um, below if you want to read them. I'm not an affiliate, it's just in case you wanted to read them. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one.